I am Rachel Romeliotis, a senior editor at O'Reilly, and I am here with Matt Newberg. He is uh, an O'Reilly author of several books, most recently a programming iOS 5. He's also a longstanding editor with Tidbits. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me. Okay, first question. Your book is programming iOS 5. is very uniquely structured. Can you explain why this learning experience is the one for iOS developers to be truly um, create great apps? It might not be for everybody. You have to look and see whether this ordering and, and this, this set of information is for you, mm -hmm. but I'll explain what I think is special sure. about it. Well, it goes back to when I was learning um, iOS programming myself, mm -hmm. and I realized that the book that I needed, that I wanted, wasn't out there. I, you can look at the, um, the documentation that comes from Apple, mm -hmm. and what you're getting is little pieces of the picture. But nobody was putting me in the big picture. Mm -hmm. Nobody was explaining to me how it hangs together. Sure. Nobody was giving me an order in which to pick up the knowledge that I needed. Mm -hmm. And as I was working that out for myself, just in a gigantic outline, mm -hmm. I realized I've got a unique resource here. Right. And the result of that outline is the book. I'll give you an example. Um, I was working away on, on, you know, drawing something using the using Objective C, and I came to a point where I wanted to be more specific than 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 the API seemed to allow me, mm -hmm. and I sort of clicked on a link in the documentation, and all of a sudden I was looking at a completely different API for drawing, and it was a pure C API, mm -hmm. and I, you know, with functions and you know lot parentheses and and the ampersand thing and and other stuff that I couldn't even remember what you were supposed to do with this sure. stuff because I hadn't thought about it, and so I avoided that. I was like, no, I don't want to get into this. Mm -hmm. It, uh, this is like some awful low level thing. No, turns out the Objective C stuff was built on the C stuff, sure. and the power was all in the C stuff. And by avoiding that. I was not going to be able to do what it, what it was that I actually wanted to do. Okay. So I realized you have to remind yourself how C works before you can use what iOS is handing you. That's so my book st starts with C, and people are like, C? I'm never going to use C. Yes, you are. And I, if I, you want to get the most out of And I tell you just enough in the book okay. for the actual stuff that you're likely to need to do. Okay, so C is underneath Objective C. Right. And then where do you go from there? So you really want to know C, you've got to get a handle on Objective C, what's next? In my structuring of my, the way that I picture how iOS works, once you understand the, the basics of the, of the Objective C language, mm -hmm. now you need to understand how Coco, Coco Touch, but let's just call it Coco, sure. the framework that you're operating in has bent and structured Objective C to accomplish the particular patterns that they're going to be using all the time. Okay. If, if there's if there's one big thing that that you, where you can just seriously go wrong working with iOS five programming, it's forgetting this is a framework. What does that mean? It means the framework Coco has a whole set of expectations about you, the mm -hmm. developer, and the way you use the framework is by letting the framework use you. So you have to know what kinds of questions is this framework going to ask me? What does it need to know from me? You can't, sh I'll give you an example. I was going to say, give, yeah. I'll give you an example. A big mistake people make all the time is they expect to be able to dive in and functionally draw something mm -hmm. in a view, a, a UI view. That's not how the framework works. Okay. Framework is going to draw when it wants to draw. Your job is to implement the particular method that it's going to look for when it's time to draw. And okay. if you've got that method, it's going to do what you say. Mm -hmm. So you don't tell it what to do. Mm -hmm. It's going to ask you in a particular way what to do. And, mm -hmm. a, and a whole set of things is going to be true at that moment. Okay. And I tell you, you know, what those things are and in what ways you need to, to respond. It's not your job to tell the system when to draw. It's the system's job to say, you know, now it's time for me to draw. Okay, and so, so it sounds like there's quite a bit of background information. Uh, and Apple does give a lot of documentation, but it sounds like what's missing is a narrative. And I know that you have a background in teaching. Can you tell me a little bit about, you know, I guess, 
in a, a little bit more expand upon what you're saying, how you can't just dive in and think, oh, you know, here's a method. This Now I know what to do with this one. You have to understand the background of it and, to get at a really core, strong app. I think what you're saying is very profound. And in fact, you know, I get email from readers, and one of them used the very phrase that you just used. He said, what you've done is to supply the API with a narrative. And you're absolutely right. It's the narrative that's the important thing. The mm -hmm. API is just a menu of, of methods that you can choose from. Mm -hmm. The question is, which ones of these are important and why are they important? Right. When I learn something, I have a tendency to remember all the mistakes that I made and all the things that confused me. They're all in the book. I mean, on almost every page it says someplace, you know, don't do this, trust me, I know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. That's because I've made some mistake myself. Right. So by remembering what the troubles were, remembering you know, the pain that I had to go through, or finding out just by experimentation that something that it says in the documentation just isn't quite true or right. isn't explained very well. Mm -hmm. you know, that, gives, that gives me something to sort of hang the structure of the discussion on. And so like in the later part of the book, uh, it's impossible to cover all of iOS. This book is a thousand pages. Right. If you wanted to cover all of iOS, you'd have like a 4,000 page book, a mm -hmm. 5,000 page book. You could spend a thousand pages just on you know, OpenGL. I mean, there's all kinds of things. So in the last part of the book, what I do is just cover a whole bunch of topics. And my aim in each of those is to bring you into the API for that particular topic, straighten it out for you so you understand what the basic concepts are, give you a few examples, and let you go. So what do you think is the most difficult of those topics more recently? Actually, I think that the most, the, I think the, the trickiest things in iOS are basic things that Apple's documentation doesn't explain okay. correctly or clearly. So I would say one of the best things about my book is the explanation of animation, for example. Okay. I've never seen animation explained the way I explained it, explain it because, because um, Apple's documentation is sort of all over the place. Mm -hmm. they, never, they never say, as I say, look, there's a series of layers. There's, there's view animation. Um, um, underneath that, there's a, there's a thing that I call implicit property animation. Underneath that, there's what most people think of as basic core animation, sure. which is explicit property animation. Mm -hmm. And I worked all this out over a series of weeks, really, just by, 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 by throwing stuff at the code and seeing what it did mm -hmm. until the little light went on. So I like to say, I suffer so that you don't have to. You right, know what I mean? Exactly. Because, look, look, developers know what they're doing. They don't have time, okay? They're mm -hmm. trying to get stuff done. Right. The problem is that in trying to shortcut yourself, what are you going to do? You're going to go out on the internet, you're going to grab some code, you're going to ask a question on Stack Overflow, you're going to copy, you're going to paste. Right. But you're not going to be any the wiser for yeah, this. Yeah, I totally agree. So my, my feeling is, when you've got time, come back and, and get the wisdom right. to find out what was underlying what you've been doing all so this time. So the foundation will help Absolutely. you build a stronger app. Absolutely, and the same thing is true for something like, let's say, View controllers, which I mentioned earlier. Um, uh, when I was first working with view controllers, I couldn't figure out when I was supposed to use them, when it was illegal, when it was legal. The documentation was never really quite explaining it to me. And one day I suddenly understood what all of this was about, what the power of these things was, and why you needed to have them basically everywhere in the application. Mm -hmm. and, and after that, everything became smooth sailing. I'll sure. give you another example. Um, there are these things, there's a thing called storyboards that they introduced in iOS 5, where you get to draw your application. And you can draw your application in different states, and you can sort of draw lines saying, well look, you could transition from this state to that state. All of that is kind of a clutch. Mm -hmm. I mean, what you're doing is you're hiding from yourself the actual relationship between one view controller and the next view controller, and this view controller's view and the next view controller's view, mm -hmm. and where this view controller actually comes from. How is it instantiated? Who's going to hold on to it? And where does the view come from? How is that instantiated? Who's going to hold on to it? And how does the view actually get into the interface? Mm -hmm. So I deal with storyboards 
only sort of in passing and at a late stage, because by the time I've I get there, I've already explained what the basis of all of this is, mm -hmm. how the view controllers actually work. And that's the stuff I think people really need to know. It sounds like it. So one final question. Um, as you mentioned, your book is big, um, gets bigger <laughs> all the time. As iOS continues to grow and upgrade and change, how do you deal with that as a developer? Well, there's two things. One is um, we're pretty flexible at O'Reilly. I mean, I, I mean, um, I mean, as an author, I guess that's not really what you asked me, but as, a, as an author, um, we can actually move pretty swiftly. Yeah. So, so we're actually able to put together um, uh, a new material in response to what Apple does. Now, as a developer, the first thing I do is take a very deep breath, and I don't get myself into a big rush. And I usually find that if I look carefully at what's coming down the pike, that Apple is actually doing me a favor. And my big problem is not, oh no, there's all this new stuff that I want to learn. Mm. My big problem is, oh, they finally made all this make sense. They finally put together this thing that was kind of messy in iOS 4 and was beginning to get better in iOS 5. And now in iOS 6, let's say, um, finally they've, they've completely rationalized this and it's going to be much easier to use. And then my problem is, do I want to go backwards at all? Do I want to keep supporting iOS 5 and iOS 4? Oh, interesting. And very often I don't. My attitude often is um, the latest and greatest really is the latest and greatest. Mm -hmm. and, and my feeling, I, I actually kind of lose sympathy for, for you know, people who have earlier devices and can't right. upgrade because I'm like, look, I can't make this work backwards. Mm -hmm. So I tend, to, I tend to stay with the wave of what Apple is doing mm -hmm. because what they're doing tends to be quite wise. You know, they look and see uh, how were people misusing mm -hmm. our code or how were people confused by our code or right. what, what were we doing that was confusing that was causing people to crash. Mm -hmm. And then they fix that. Right. So they really do get better. They're not just throwing new features at you. Right. It, it's in, it, they make improvements that are conceptual improvements and, and it's great to take advantage of that. Well, that is definitely good. I'm excited about <laughs> iOS 6. And a good point to end on. Thank you very much for joining Thank me you. today. Thank you.